What's up guys, so today we're going to be going over the basic Juniper configuration, uh, how to navigate the CLI, the differences between this and iOS, so let's go. Alright guys, so now you see the CLI for the Switch. It's a Juniper 4200 physical Switch that I have. So right now, we're in operational mode. When you first log in to a Switch, a brand new Switch, usually the username is root and it has no password and it will take you into the shell and then once you're in the shell you can type in CLI and then come to this, the operational mode so this is where you do your show commands to verify your configurations are working like if you want to show OSPF neighbors or whatever this is a lot like the privileged exec mode in iOS so start off with let's say that we want to configure a host name for the switch so in iOS, you would say config t and then type in hostname and then the hostname. And once you type that in, it will take it right away. But you'll see here in Juniper that you your commands you type in are not active immediately. It goes into uh, the candidate config, which will then allow you to check and commit before it goes into effect. So let's take a look at that. If we go to configure mode. So under configure mode, this is where you do everything as far as configuration for the most part. So if you just show, you can see this is the default uh, configuration. And if you notice, there's different hierarchies of the, the show command. So each command is under a different level and this is how the Juno system is set up and it's different than uh, iOS but so everything has a hierarchy level and if you want to edit something you can either go to that level and then type in only what's underneath it or you can type in everything so just to show an example and set the host name so if we want to set the host name we can either say set system host name and then whatever or we could go to edit system as you can see here it tells us what, what where we're at in the hierarchy we could say set host name and it's the same command so, so it's important to realize where you're at and the uh, uh, configurations available and no, another cool thing is if you're under edit system say didn't mean to do that if you do show it will only show you the relevant configuration underneath that level. So if we went under edit interfaces, we have to go up first. If we did show, it will only show us the configuration for interfaces. So once you're in a level to get up, you can either say up one or up two or up three, however many levels you want to go up, or you can say top. Either way, works. So, now that we set the host name, you can see that it's not active because if it was, it would be right here. So, it's stored in the candidate config. So if we do show compare rollback zero, which is uh, before the current active configuration, you can see that once we commit, we will add this one command. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see that it will give us an error because we need to set a password. So no matter what, Juno requires you to have a password, unlike um, Cisco iOS. So let's go ahead and set the root password. Right, now we should be able to commit and you can see the check goes through and it should commit after a few seconds and there you go do show you can see now that we have the hostname configured under system all right so now that we have the hostname configured let's uh, set a user so if we go under set system login 
user. And then say that username, say Josh, class of the user, which we want a super user. And then the authentication will say plain text. And then I'll set my password. All right, and then I should be able to commit. Well, first off, let's see what we did. You can see that when we go to commit, we will add these configurations. It's what the plus sign means. If we deleted something, it would say minus. So let's go ahead and do that. Another interesting thing that you might notice is that the password is automatically encrypted no matter what in the uh, configuration. Unlike Cisco IOS where you have to say service password encryption or something, it's automatically done for you in Junos. Another interesting thing. So now we have a user and we set the host name. So if I go out. Should be able to log in with my username and there we go so in this video we just set the host name and the user in future videos we'll go through setting vlans uh, routing all this stuff so this is just the beginning but as you can see things are a little bit different in junos it just but they're still very similar so once you know how things work, you pretty much can guess your, th your way through the commands in order to do what you want. Alright, so stay tuned for future videos and thank you for watching.